Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel, The Medieval Reader. So today I don't have any discussion videos or any recent reads to talk about, but I do have a book to show, so. So I just got from the library, Reformations by Carlos Iyer. It is a massive, massive study of the Reformations in the early modern period, the religious Reformations. Um, Carlos Iyer is coming to speak at my university next Wednesday. He is a professor at Yale. And the reason why I am so excited to have this book, finally, is that I've been wanting to have this book for over a year, since I saw Steve Donahue unpackage it um, in one of his haul videos. It, it was a, an advanced review copy, and I was like, I want this book, I want this book. Um, and then it came out, and then I looked at the price and I was like, mm, I don't think I want to pay $40 for this book. I'll wait for it to be at my research library. But the research library in Kentucky did not have a copy, and I never um, used interlibrary loan to get a copy. And then Penn actually had a copy of the library, but it was out. And actually, it's still out. It's overdue now. Whoever has the book out better return it soon. Um, and so when I saw that it was out, I was like, I need to get my own copy because I want to read as much of it as possible before I hear him speak next week. And so I put in a request um, through Interlibrary Loan to get a copy and I finally, finally got a copy. And I am so, 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 so excited to read this book. Um, <laughs> I'm really making this video legitimately because when I heard that this book finally came in, I was definitely fangirling. <laughs> I mean, um, it is published, I believe, by Yale University Press. Um, yes, uh, which would make sense. He is a Yale professor um, and has a blurb on the back by Peter Marshall. And I just reviewed recently 1517 by Peter Marshall. This book, Reformations, will most likely do something very different than um, Marshall's 1517, uh, which looks at the reception history of uh, images of Luther. Um, this looks at um, the period between 1450 and 1650, so the early modern period, and all of the different reformations, not simply the Protestant Reformation. So it's divided up into three parts. You have um, part one is on the edge, which deals with uh, humanism. So it looks first at religion in late uh, in the late Middle Ages, that looks at religious descent, and then Italian humanism, um, northern biblical humanism, so probably Erasmus, um, and um, then it looks at Protestants and the different types of Protestants, so you have um, the Lutheran Reformation, the Swiss Zwinglian Reformation, Calvinist Reformation, then England, which I know next to nothing about, so that will be really interesting. Um, the rest I have a pretty good foundation in, Catholic Reformation, um, dealing with, you know, the Descalza Carmelites, the Jesuits, all of that. Um, and then the consequences of that. And I think this, this will be a really um, solid introduction to the Reformation. Um, and he's going to end with an assessment of the Reformations. And I really like how it has an S at the end. I think, especially having read the preface, um, he really wants to emphasize that there were many Reformations, not just Reformation with a capital R, um, which is how we often speak of the 16th century. So I'm so excited to have this book. <laughs> and um, I, you know, I know that Nonfiction November is coming up, but I will definitely, I will most likely not finish this book before November. So I will be finishing this book in November. Um, and then I want to talk a little bit about um, some of the other books I plan to read in November. I want to continue with Charlemagne by Johannes Fried, which I began but never finished. I would like to read maybe a medieval chronicle, maybe Froissart's Chronique. I do have a copy. So this is Froissart's Chronique. It is an abridged version because the original is hundreds and hundreds of pages long. Uh, thousands, I think, maybe. Um, it's a multi-volume. And Froissart was a 14th century uh, historian, and he was chronicling the Hundred Years' War, I believe. Yes. Um, he's considered the greatest historian of the Hundred Years' War. This is an abridged version translated uh, from Latin by Geoffrey Brereton. So this is in a um, Penguin's uh, Classics edition. I've been wanting to read this for a while and while it is nonfiction, it is a medieval chronicle and medieval chronicles always included some fable. 
I count it as nonfiction because the author presents it as nonfiction. Um, historians of the Middle Ages presented their histories, of course, as fact, even though there would be a lot of legends included, sometimes deliberately, sometimes not. Um, and I think this will be um, an opportunity for me to talk about medieval histories. Um, so I do hope to read this, of course, continue with Charlemagne um, by Johannes Fried. And then if I have time, I would like to read the first volume of Jonathan Sumption's multi-volume narrative history on the Hundred Years' War. And it would be really interesting to read that after reading Poissas Chronique to see what are the similarities, what are the differences. I'm sure that Poissas will be a major source for Sumption's study. The only work by Sumption I've ever read is his study of the Albigensian Crusade, and I thought it was very, very good. So those are my plans for nonfiction November. I really made this video to fangirl about Girl is Hire's Reformations that I finally got a copy of. Um, I was just so excited, I wanted to share it. But I also thought, you know, I probably should mention some of the other books I plan to read in November. Um, so I'm excited about nonfiction November. And um, let me know if you've read any of the books I've mentioned today. And I will talk to you later. Bye now.